Hello, welcome to the Big Scuba Show. Hey everybody, I'm Jeff Seckendorf, the president and CEO of UTD Scuba Diving, and I'm on the Big Scuba Podcast with Ian and Gemma. Today's episode is sponsored by Narked at 90, so let's find out a bit more about them. Narked at 90, their tagline has been beyond technical, which describes them pretty well. John Routley and Brent Hudson launched the company over 20 years ago. They are both technical divers who have logged thousands of mixed gas dives between them over a 30-year period. Using their engineering know-how and diving expertise have developed bespoke personal, commercial and military diving equipment and products of a universally recognised, unparalleled calibre. Their ability to be adaptive and versatile with their developments led them to support the NHS during COVID. Using their superior knowledge of breathing and oxygen monitoring systems to help develop emergency ventilators. They also design and supply the sneaky stuff used by defence-based development groups throughout the Western world, although they can't tell us much about that. If you're thinking of moving across to tech diving or completely new to diving, Narked at 90 can advise and guide on the best equipment and setup for your personal or commercial requirements. Narked at 90 have unparalleled experience of shearwater dive computers and are the longest serving and sole and UK European service centre for those. They are happy to offer technical support, servicing, repairs and upgrades to all shearwater computers, past and present. Narked at 90 stock shearwater computers, but are also stockers and technical support centre for many other manufacturers, including Divesoft, JJCCR, Hollis, Revo and Kiss Rebreathers. Based centrally in the UK, Narked at 90 also offer full rebreather head servicing for selected manufacturers. Bespoke cable assemblies. Advice on specific fitting requirements. Suggestions and guidance for home builds. Computer laser cutting and engraving. Pressure testing to simulate 400 metre dives. So, Narked at 90, a reputation built on supporting both manufacturers and divers worldwide. Go to narkedat90.com and make sure you are following their social media to keep up to date with their latest news and offers. Narked at 90, large enough to cope, small enough to care. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Big Scoop podcast. My name is Ian, I am your dive master for this podcast episode. With me is... My name's Gemma and I'm the other co-host and welcome to the Big Scuba Podcast. Yes, we're back and uh, well, we've been to the Go Diving show, we're going to talk a bit about that. Yep. We have got another guest for you and his name is Jeff Seckendorf. That's right, from United Team Divers. Yeah, so we're going to be talking about that and also we've got a bit of a busy week coming up. Uh, we've had a busy week, we've got another busy week coming up. Uh, we've got we're doing some more recording this week and we'll talk about that and also um we're doing some full face diving we at are the end of this yeah. week we've as got well our qualification we? yeah so uh, yeah been a busy uh week or so really uh let's talk about what's on the the main thing it's the, that time of the year when we have our one and only uh, dive show in the diving world. Yep, yeah, that was yesterday, Saturday. So we travelled up and went into the trade show. That was uh, sort of eight eight thirty till ten o'clock. Had a wander around, caught up with a few people, and then the main event started at ten a.m. and that lasted until five. And it's on again today, Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. Yes. Yeah. So uh, all you happy people at the Go Dive Show, I hope you're all having a great time. By the time this come out, you would all be back and probably on the way to work and. Yeah. what have you or uh, yeah so uh, would have been job done and uh, another successful show it was a fab show it was so busy it was bigger than last year and yeah there were bigger more exhibitors uh, different speakers and it was just nice to catch up with some previous guests actually face to face and physically it say is. hello and we'll come, we'll come <laughs> to that in a bit we've got to say uh, well done to uh, Mark and Penny and Luke um, for you know as and a, Ross and uh, Ross uh, for the whole team effort um, of everybody and the people behind the scenes who 
help put that show together for yeah. everyone to take part yeah and, uh, it's an enormous feat and takes a lot of work and yeah it and this year was a bit different because there was a, a UK element about the diving wasn't there the, yes you know there's a so there's in two sections where last year it was all, we we're all in one one hall this time it was on uh, there was another section where it was a focus on UK diving and the main stage was uh, held and a bar at the at the end. Yeah, it was all very well laid out, and so uh, yeah, so I think um, we must have yeah done lots of steps yesterday, but it was just a, a really good layout. Great to see the speakers. Yeah, and um, all the the usual um, uh, manufacturers were there. Um, we, we we went to see. Uh, there's so many we can't name them all, obviously, uh, but the usuals: Fourth Element, O uh, Three. Uh, scuba pro um, kubi gloves were there gloves. santi real diving yeah uh, we saw garmin were there yeah um hammond's dry suits yeah yeah, yeah. So. Uh, there's loads uh, and uh yeah we, we, too many that we can name um i'm going to just say just cut into this as well while we're talking about you know the go dive show and uk diving it was really cool really good to see uh the guys from Lundy Diving, yeah, who yeah. are there. Um, if you've got any part of the diving uh, community uh, in the UK, uh, you would have heard this really sad news about the um, the passing of Andrew Begney. Mm -hmm. Begney and um, we we're all shocked um, and saddened by that news. And our thoughts and um, you know big hug to that whole family yeah and, um, and everybody who knew him yeah and we did see sam and um obviously sam and ben will be back on yeah. at some point yeah, um, yeah so yeah life obviously they're keen to get the business going they've got lots of bookings for the dive season that starts in may i think on uh barbara b and obsession yeah, yeah. it is uh, and it's good to see them and uh yeah like i said we are, our thoughts are with yeah yeah uh, definitely with, with ben and his family so uh yeah big hug to you ben um, right, okay, uh, but yeah, the, 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 we spoke to someone from the Isle of Skye. We did, yes, uh, about he's just getting a diving charter started up there, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I kind of fancy that, because, you know, we we dived in the Loch Long, mm. and we saw scallops swimming around, which is <laughs> like, that blew my mind. Yeah. They are, I'm pretty sure they're not meant to swim. They are. I know, but you they look are. at them, you think... How are you swimming? Propelling themselves. I know, it's awesome. And uh, anyway, uh, the the life in that lot was just an yeah. abundant, wasn't it? It was amazing. Yeah, and the guy from uh, Sky, he, the scenery he had on his posters was amazing, wasn't yeah. it? He's getting his boat converted, putting a dive lift in it, and uh, they they start um, very soon. So that kind of was quite tempting, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we had a look at some folding fins. Yeah. <laughs> um, which, different. Um, they were from Poland, weren't they, the guys? Yeah. And uh, they're particularly aimed at the travel market, and they do stuff with the military as well. But Apparently, they, they yeah. looked pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, we've sort of said to them, you know, we'd be more than willing to... Give give a pair a go, and we'll send them back, and yeah, I see, think you know, so. see what you know, see what they're like. Um, they're interesting, yeah. um, you know. That's innovative. Yeah, uh, absolutely. You know, I, I do love my force fins, and I'm not looking to move away from them anytime soon. But uh, you know, folding fins. Yeah. Who knew? Yeah, and obviously at that show there are lots of travel companies, aren't there, that yes. are promoting their liverboards or their dive resorts. Um, so. Yeah, it's, it's not just UK based. There's so much there that you can see worldwide. Oh, loads, loads. And, um, you know, there was the uh, the shark that, you know, with the, like, what do they call that? <laughs> Rodeo. Rodeo thing. <laughs> yeah, they had that, the, the climbing wall. Yeah, you know, the if cave. You ha if you haven't well. made to the Go Diving show this year, why not? You know, you've got to book your tickets for next year. Yeah, they do even have a pool, so you can do a tri-dive. Yeah, yeah, you so, can. You can try kit out yeah. and all sorts. So of put it in the diary next March. It's usually the first week, second week of March. Then definitely consider Yeah. Uh, so we, we should mention some of the speakers. Yes. You know, we uh, we didn't hear everybody speak. Um, some And there's more speakers today. Um, we was there for listening to Ross Kemp. Yes. That yeah. was really interesting, listening to Ross and had had a selfie yeah you actually selfie. got a selfie with him shook, shook the man's <laughs> hand and said well done on, on yeah. the show he was interviewed by Andy Torbett who is a friend of the podcast and we actually got to have a quick chat with him yeah yeah a little yeah, catch up nice. with him yeah 
Um, we also saw, obviously, Christina and Kevin, who are big, big uh, friends of the podcast. So we actually got to finally see them in yeah. face-to-face. Yeah. And that was lovely. So we had was, a good catch-up yeah. with them. It seems ages ago when we first, you know, actually did a recording with, with them. And um, it, it was, was a, it lockdown seemed, time, wasn't just it? Just a whole yeah. different world for them um, and for us, you yeah. know. And uh, particularly for them, you know, they, they went through it a lot harder. Than what we yeah. did but it's great to see them so happy and so busy with uh, what they've got happening yeah liverboards teaching kids out in the philippines yeah. and uh, yeah. they've got everything going on and uh, uh yeah it's just amazing and uh yeah to you know see see him yesterday yeah. was awesome yeah we caught up with patrick widman he's a cave explorer from austria yeah uh, Chris Jewell, who we've obviously interviewed previously, so it's nice to have a little chat with Still him. Still doing all his cycling. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, he's had some amazing uh, cave exploration. Been back to the cave. Yeah, the, the big cave in Thailand. Yeah, he's been back. Yeah. He? So um, that was interesting. And we've done some recordings, so uh, uh, we didn't get back till late last night, but we'll try and get everything out, you know, over the in course the of the In the next few weeks, yeah. yeah. yeah so there'll be stuff to, stuff to watch, stuff to listen to as well. Um, and also we had people we had loads of people come up to us and we were just like okay hello you know, it was really <laughs> nice a big scoop of podcasts. yeah I know and, and obviously you're not used to that and we've got to say a big shout out to Megan who come up to us with full of uh, energy and was like, <laughs> I love your podcast <laughs> yeah that was really cool um, and Scuba Matt we saw Matt who's, who yep. was on earlier in the year wasn't he yeah that's right a few episodes yeah. ago yeah there was a guy called Ian Sharp who's obviously a fan of the podcast yeah. so say hello to them and then some uh, people from Ilkeston and Kimberley uh, Sub Aqua Club yeah um, yep. saw them and a few others as well So uh, and then some people really we didn't they kind of just waved and yeah, pointed. Yeah, waved and <laughs> smiled and pointed. So we just waved Laughed. Yeah. <laughs> ran away. Yeah, but if you want to say a shout out or hello, yeah, just uh, drop us a DM or a message. Yeah. So, yeah, and if you um, have got any comments about the Go Diving show, yeah, drop us a DM. Say what you thought of the show. Yeah, absolutely. What was your highlights? Of it? Let's hear and but, you know, it'd be good to share them yeah, with, yeah. with Mark and the team. Um, not sure shorts was such a good idea yesterday. Oh, I think it was so fine. It was fine yes. in the hall, but when we went out, I was like, Ugh. Ian wore shorts yesterday. Yeah, but somebody was wearing shorts and flip flops on yesterday, <laughs> which I, th- I thought was quite a brave move. Yeah, it's a yeah. Well, it was a lot of walking to do, and it was quite warm in one of the halls, wasn't it? Yeah, th- yeah. Thank goodness. So uh, yeah, but yeah. it was good, good fun, and well done to Mark and the team. So uh, yeah, looking uh, forward to next year as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I'll be booking tickets for that, and maybe, maybe I'll have scuba honey with me next year yeah maybe make a bigger weekend she should of be it. a diver by that by this time next year so yeah. uh, who knows yeah. maybe she'll come that's a long old day because we left it we left here just it's... after five didn't we yeah yesterday? yeah and we didn't get back here till about nine did we yeah so, so it's long yeah. old day but for, for us it's about a three hour kids. drive isn't it so yeah. it's a but it's an easy drive so. yeah so uh, uh hello to you um for coming up and speaking to us and hello if you didn't so, yes uh, yeah but great to see you all it is. Um, right. Okay. Let's talk a bit about our guest, shall we? Yeah. So Jeff Seckendorf, he's the uh, founder of United Team Divers, which is a diving agency in some respects. It, um, oh, it is. No, yeah. it is. It's, it's a, a, a diving agency. Um, they are predominantly um, available in US, Europe and Asia. Yes, yeah, um, they don't have a presence in the UK at the no, moment. No, no, they don't, um, because you know going through health and safety and all that sort of stuff in, in UK is a nightmare. You can imagine trying to do that. Yeah. So, uh, but if not you a job. are from the UK, there's no reason why you can't go to Europe, Asia, or US yeah. to you know investigate um, United Team Divers a bit more. It's quite an interesting way how they teach. Um, so you know, for a lot of us. Um, with Paddy, um, say you, you know you you'll turn up, you pay a fee, and you'll spend the weekend, do a course, and at the end of it, hopefully, you know you do the skills, you'll be qualified. You are signed off. Uh, Bzac, another one. Uh, it's a clubs, it's a club environment where you know you work together to get the qualification. Mm. With uh, United uh, Team Diving, they are uh, more about coaching. Yeah, it's a mentor it's just, yeah, kind it's of coaching, thing. mentor, subscription, and 
you know, you, they work with you. And one of the first things you'll learn is neutral buoyancy. Yeah, so they start that um, with no fins on and yeah. no tank on. So literally, they're starting very much from basics to get the basics before you start putting your kit on. Yeah, so with teaching, you're, you know, everything you'll be learning, you'll be neutrally buoyant. Yeah. Because it's one of the most basic and the most important skills. You know, it's you, like you walking. Know, well, it is, but yeah. you, you don't want to be going somewhere like where there's a really pre pretty reef and you're crashing into it and what have you because you can't manage your boy. You know, cave divers, you look at a cave diver. No. You know, and they're, you you could draw a line by it. You know, their buoyancy is spot on. They can, know. and the other thing you mentioned was uh, back finning, isn't it? Because yeah. you're not taught that. They're caught back finning. Was it? Positioning. No, positioning. Positioning. So that's something that you're not taught on your course, and it's just something maybe you pick up. I've never been taught. Positioning I've never been in taught, but it's something I just picked up. Yeah. So again, that's such an important thing for your yeah um, comfort comfortableness underwater. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's it's really good, and um, it's a really. In, I could have spoke to him for hours. Actually, he's a really interesting guy. Mad on cycling. Yeah. Um, you know, he's attempting a world record. Uh, coming up and he's going to be doing uh the trying to do as many kilometers he can do in 60 minutes yeah in a velodrome yeah and at the moment the t the record is 56 yeah. wasn't it yeah and he's going to try and beat that and his guy heading towards 70 yeah, yeah. so yeah. fitness amazing yeah. um to be able to do that so yeah, it's really interesting, and um, you yeah, do stick around. That's coming up very shortly. Yeah. Also, to mention, he does have a podcast as well. Does so, yeah, yes, so, we should mention um, that. We'll put obviously check the links out in the podcast notes, and you can have a listen. So to this that as episode well. is actually going out. Well, our conversation that we have with mm. Jeff is actually going across the airwaves, and that'll be going out over his over airwaves. his as well. Yeah. So uh, yeah, hands across <laughs> the ocean they call it. Don't exactly. They, don't they? Yeah. Um, <laughs> also, uh, just before we get to that. Um, is uh, Monday we are we're having the Zoom with um, our uh, friend Craig Main Prize. Yeah, he's um, an agent for Ocean Reef in the UK. Yeah, we're um, going to have a little Zoom to set these full face masks up, set yeah. the comms up, um, and everything else. I'm yeah, forward to yeah. That. So we just need screwdrivers and spanners. Yeah, and then we are in the water Saturday at Gildenberg doing our full face mask qualification. Yeah. Praying for clear water would be nice. Yeah, we know it's going to be a little bit chilly, but it's just a case of we just need to get in, do it, and then we're ready yeah, to... Yeah, yeah. Full face mask off. Big Half rating. mask on. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we've got to do all that lovely fun stuff. That'd be fine. All yeah, be there's good. not too many skills to sort out. It's no, just no. Out, out I just want to crack on. Just yeah. want to get done now. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah, just get qualified and start using it. Because the week after that, we're in the river. We are, yeah. Uh, pulling out debris and all sorts in Norwich. Yeah, so we right. hope to be wearing our full face masks then and doing the hope comms so. and yeah. get a GoPro on our masks so yeah, that we can so record. Yeah, so look for that. Um, and hopefully we'll be doing... We should be doing some recording underwater. I oh, hopefully it'll be clearer than that. <laughs> so, beep. Yes. Sorry, I forgot the beep. Anyway, yeah, beep, beep, beep. <laughs> anyway, we digress. So uh, I think we kind of covered everything. Yeah, yeah. No, so it's been a busy uh, couple of weeks and we've got a busy couple of weeks ahead, I think. Yeah, yeah. Got lots coming up. Got a busy year ahead. Got mm. um, the Honey Meister doing her open water. Yes. Um, yeah. So... Uh, Later on, she's booked in for June, yep. start of June. With, she's doing uh, all her skills Crystal at the Seas. moment. Um, yeah, so uh, if your kids uh, are now doing it as well, um, perhaps you give us a message as you know, let us know how they are getting on. Um, I'm, I'm not, we're not sharing any pictures and stuff like that, um, because uh, I don't want to add pressure to honey. No, so, uh, no, so just to uh, let you know how she gets on, yeah, from week yeah to absolutely. Week. Yeah, I hope you all understand that, um, but yeah. Should we uh, get Jeff on? Yes, yep. So Jeff Seckendorf, um, he, we spoke to him and he was based in San Diego at the time we spoke to him. Yep. And uh, he is going to tell us all about UTD, United Team Divers. Brilliant. All right, let's get him on. So thank you, Jeff uh, Seckendorf, for joining us on the Big Scuba podcast today. Yeah, awesome with, to with be With Gemma as well. Yeah, yeah, great to have you with us. Thank you. And you are of an experienced podcaster, YouTube channel, and obviously diver and cyclist. And uh, we'll try and cover all these things. So uh, first off, we like to ask our guests, um, what does scuba diving mean to you? 
Wow, that's a good question. So, you know, I come to scuba as, as a recreationist, like I think most people do, you know, you start by, God, that looks interesting. Let's go someplace where most people don't go. Yeah. Uh, so, so I did that and, you know, I became a scuba diver for a very specific purpose. I was teaching in the film industry and the, the group I was teaching for was going to do an underwater cinematography course and I wanted to go help. Mm -hmm. So they said, well, go get scuba trained and then you can do it. So I did and I did and it was fun. And so I kind of learned to scuba dive so I could work underwater, but really quickly found out it was just super fun. Yeah, and it was just really fun. And then did that for many years. And then I've always been involved in mentoring, coaching, um, training adults in different areas. So it's kind of a natural thing. I was a flight instructor at that time. Also, it's kind of a natural thing just to become an instructor. Yeah. Uh, and then one thing led to another, and now I own UTD scuba diving. Wow. There's yeah. a gap in there we could talk yeah. about. But... <laughs> <laughs> and it's formally known as the Unified Team Diving. Yeah, we started it in 2008 as Unified Team Diving. Yeah. And then uh, <clears throat> somebody came along and said, that's a terrible name for search engines to find because it doesn't say scuba diving in it. So we changed mm. it. I don't know, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, and it still is haunting us that we had to change the name. Did yeah. we try changing the name of a company? Uh, uh, that's we, really hard. We changed the, the website, didn't yeah. we? We changed our website. That's probably the nearest thing we did. Yeah. 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 Really so, so we did that. We made it UTD scuba diving. And then in 2019, I bought out my partner. We had an equipment division and we separated all that out. So I don't have anything to do with the equipment anymore. UTD scuba diving, it's training and certification only and now coaching. Yeah. And, and, uh, and that's the piece of it that I own. Okay. Is it a worldwide organization or is it just US? US oh, no, it's, it's way worldwide. Okay. Yeah. We're probably weakest in the US. Um, right. You know, we're strong in, in Asia. We're super strong in Korea, Italy, Spain, Denmark um you know there's pockets mm -hmm. yeah, where there are utd instructors but yeah completely global yeah yeah so um obviously you've got some kind of coaching program so is that can you explain a bit more about it is it purely online or do you have to kind of physically see a instructor yeah that's a good long story <laughs> which we can spend as much time on as you want so um you know i'm as we were talking about earlier i'm a, a master's athlete i race my bicycle on the track mostly and in long time trials and um i've been a coached athlete for a long long time and so so what i know about coaching is that for an athlete you can get faster by yourself but it's hard to get better right and there's a differentiation so what I discovered a long time ago was that coaching, it made me a faster cyclist, but it also really made me a better athlete because there's so much more to riding a bike than just going faster. Yeah. You know, there's all the other stuff. There's, you know, the mental part, nutrition, you know, lifestyle, there's a million things, you know, the science, the engineering, the equipment, all that. So, when I took over UTD, I had this vision that we should embrace this coaching model that endurance athletes have been using forever and bring it to coaching. So um, our training director, Ben Boss, and I, who's a triathlete, got together and we figured out a model to use all of the stuff from um, endurance athletic training swim, run, bike, and apply it to scuba diving. Wow. Okay. So, yeah. So, Which is pretty unique, isn't it? It is unique. I wish it was less unique, oddly. I what? would kind of like to get copied a little bit because, you know, we're a small training agency. We're global, but we're a small training agency. And with coaching, I think it's such a valuable program. I think I'm pushing an elephant uphill a little bit. You think, you know, some of the agencies are, are too big to – to make that kind of change well so you're looking maybe... at the bureaucracy of utd mm -hmm. right okay we have very little bureaucracy we have an idea we we can try it 
Yeah. And if it works great, if it doesn't work, we just like, whoa, that didn't work. That was a bad yeah. idea. And we untry it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we're, you know, we're, we're lean like that and able to try things, some of which don't work. As soon yeah. as I took on, as soon as I bought out UTD and owned it full. And the first thing I did was I set up a subscription program for the content. Mm. So instead of buying one bit of course materials for like a recreational to advanced course, you would subscribe to the course materials and you would get all of our recreational course materials for a monthly fee. Okay. And that didn't, that didn't go so well. We right. thought it was a great idea, but it turned out the market didn't like it because again, it was too new. Mm. Nobody kind of knew what to do with it. So we had to go back to the old transactional piece where you, if you want to take our tech one class, you buy the tech one course. Yeah. Um, and I like the subscription model, but it didn't work. Coaching it's different because we're going to do coaching till the, the end of the days of UTD, whenever that hopefully never comes. Okay. Uh, because I think it's so valuable. So I, but because we're, this is what I was saying earlier. I want other people to embrace it from a training agency standpoint, because mm -hmm. I think that's the only way it's going to grow as a model. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we were one of the first agencies to teach neutrally buoyant, teach horizontal trim, teach all of your training from like day one, before you get gear, you know, flatten the water and using your breath to control your buoyancy. Mm -hmm. You know, our students don't see scuba equipment until they've done like four hours in the pool with a snorkel and then a surface supplied hanging regulator. So they learn how to breathe, control their buoyancy with their breathing. Then we give them a little bit of a gear and a little more. But where's that around. originally come from? That way of thinking. We made it up. Yeah, that's good. Just made it up. You just thought that'd be a different way of doing it. I mean, there's a long story about it that we figured it out. We have a course called Extreme Scuba Makeover. But there must be some kind of, you know, like science behind that th that thought. So I was in a pool a million years ago with a student who could not get through our most basic class. Okay. And it was every reason in the world he had. It's my dry suit. It's my diet. It's my this. It's my mm -hmm. that. It's what... And I, I remember this person was, a, was um, a fake student for us on an instructor development class. So I'd sent the instructor candidate into the pool to fix him go fix this person's buoyancy and let me see what you do. Mm -hmm. It was kind of toward the end of our IDC and it was hopeless. No, you know, he wasn't, the instructor candidate wasn't able to make any progress and the, the fake student couldn't manage it. And so I was watching this whole thing happen. And as this student, fake student was descending and about to hit the bottom of the pool with his finger, thinking that we wouldn't see that, I saw bubbles coming out of his mouth. And I'm like, well, that's not right. <laughs> so, and then the student would start up and go past the mark, and there would be no bubbles coming out of his mark. And I was like, what is up with this? So we went to the surface, and I was like, harsh about it. I was like, when you're descending and you can't control it, why are you breathing out? Yeah. And he had no idea. It's like, I don't know, I'm just breathing. Mm. And that was the light bulb, right? And that started our first big meme about this, which is breathing is about buoyancy. Yeah. And the fact that it keeps you alive is a side effect. So every time you're in the water diving, every breath you take should be for the sole purpose of controlling your buoyancy. And because the water, it's a moving environment and there's stuff going on and surge and things like that. You'll have to use your breath to control your buoyancy enough times that you will, as a side effect, stay alive. Right. Mm -hmm. Once we change the consciousness about breathing yeah. from staying alive to buoyancy control, everything made sense. This student went back in the water, was about to hit the bottom, took a big breath and didn't hit the bottom. Mm -hmm. Started going up through his mark and started breathing out and didn't hit the surface. Yeah. So we were able to figure out really early in our our um, development as a training agency, that if we just taught people to breathe first for buoyancy, 90% of their diving problems would go away. From that, we developed this extreme scuba makeover class, which is a one-day buoyancy course. And then from that, we developed our first day of our open water training, which is this extreme scuba makeover program where yeah. we start the students in the water in a bathing suit, and that's it. 
mm -hmm. they have to learn how to hold horizontal trim on a mid breath with no gap, you know, just by filling their lungs to the proper amount. If yeah. they're sinking, they come back up and they get more air. If they're floating, they let some out. So it's real back we, basics. Oh, it's so basic, but yeah. it's not taught because normally when you go into an open water recreational class, the first thing they do in the pool is give you a seven millimeter wetsuit and a tank and a BC and yeah. a hood and gloves and this True. and that and the other thing. And next thing you know, it's like, what the hell? Yeah. Yeah. How do you manage any of that? And then when you're done and you suffer through that course, then they sell you a, you know, a buoyancy course. Yeah. Well, that's totally ass backwards. So yeah. we do it the other way. We teach them to do their buoyancy first, and then we show them how to use the equipment. Just out of interest, when you um, are teaching students, um, mm -hmm. like even just like basic skills, are you buoyant in the water as instructors? Or are oh, you yeah. sitting at, uh, that's oh. what I thought you might be. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nobody touches the bottom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ever. Yeah. Pool, ocean, lake, nobody touches the bottom. I've so, taken open water classes by other classes yeah. where the instructor is standing in a pile of silt and their students are kneeling in a pile of silt. And our yeah. students have never seen anybody do that. Yeah, They've never kneeled. And yeah. the reality of it is, why would you teach somebody emergency procedures while they're kneeling? Yeah, it's almost Are like learning to walk or learning to ride a bike. You've gone really back. You have to start somewhere without any equipment and yeah, and move it forward. Yeah, yeah. And it's quite it an interesting way, isn't it? Because you, well, you know, you're right what you say because the buoyancy is the key, isn't it? Because that's diving. Yeah, the buoyancy it's like the bread is and butter. Mm. I'm sorry. It's like the bread and butter, isn't it? It's just you know that has to come first before you it can. Has to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but when you guys learned to dive or when I learned to dive, did I learn that first? No. no. Not no. a chance in hell. No, 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 no. You know, I was that guy who got, you know, a tank and a BC and a big fat wetsuit and, yeah, you know, got in a pool and was, I didn't know how to dive. You yeah. know, I barely knew how to use the equipment, but I really didn't know how to dive. So mm. we flipped it. Let's teach you to dive. Once you're a diver, which means you can control your buoyancy with a surface supply regulator. Then we'll let you play with the equipment. So you're and the first that, agency that has done this. I th I think we're probably the first agency that's really brought it mainstream. Mm. Yeah. Right. I mean, you know, GUE had an open water class that I don't know if anybody ever took. Um, the other sort of tech agencies were very dependent on what the instructors wanted to do. Right. Right. TDI, INTD, all these alphabet soups. We were the, I believe we were the first to really mandate it that said, this is how you're going to teach. And mm -hmm. we wrote a thing called an instructor playbook. This is also back in 2008. And the instructor playbook, we have standards, of course, to tell you what the, tell the instructors what they have to do. But then we have the playbook that tells them how to do it. So there's no deviating from any of this. If you want to be a UTD instructor, you, yeah. you teach neutrally buoyant, horizontal trim, you know, the first kick they learn, basically, even before they learn a frog kick, is the back kick. Wow. So they can hold their position. Right? That's, that's not taught these days. No. No. But we do it on every single class. And those skills that our students learn as open water diver, divers follow them through their whole career. Mm -hmm. So when they go deeper recreational or tech or cave or rebreather or whatever they go to, they never have to relearn or unlearn neutral buoyancy, horizontal trim, team diving procedures, staying close to your teammate, you know, the, an, an air share in open water is the same as an air share in tech two. Well, because no, they're just facing each other. They're on a long hose and they just share gas and go up. Right. Okay. And that like in their first two days. Yeah. Yeah. It's fascinating, right? Yeah, yeah, no, it's certainly um quite refreshing to. <laughs> I'm, just thinking, I'm so glad to hear I was just that. thinking about like the big agencies, how they could actually do that, and I just don't know think they could because uh, they're so f ingrained with their doctrine of teaching um, bureaucracy, yeah, and the, the the whole sales thing of you know getting all this uh, kit and what have you really early on um, that they, they probably couldn't come away from that. Um, but it can't, it does make sense. And, uh, you know, I've, I've seen stuff 
um, taught and stuff online uh, of instructors being, you know, um, neutrally buoyant when they teach. And that does look awesome. Yeah. Looks why much wouldn't more you? professional than kneeling on the ground. Why wouldn't you? Because, you know, we're very focused on the theory of education. Yeah. So one of the things we always look at um, are the laws of learning. And there's one called the law of primacy. The law of primacy states that the first thing you learned about something is the thing you'll remember the most. Mm. So if the first thing that you're taught in scuba diving is horizontal trim, proper buoyancy, and staying close to your team, which is the most important thing in scuba diving anyway, that you'll carry that through your whole career. Yeah. Mm. If the first thing you're taught is to kneel on the bottom and your instructor is standing, it condones that. And it condones that for a career. It's yeah. really hard to unlearn that. We are so yeah. much happier when we get new students than we when we have to, like our toughest student is like 60 dives, bought his own gear, you know, took an advanced course when he had three dives. Yeah. And we have to unlearn everything in that yeah. dive. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. That's the toughest part. So and how long would it take from somebody who's totally new, never dived before, to then get to the stage where they are uh, safe to go with a buddy into, say, for a, a dive? Four days. Really? Same as everybody else. Yeah. Okay. It's the same as everybody else. It's, you know, it's two days in the pool and two, what, four-hour sessions in the pool and then four, five, six dives. Wow. Okay. Yeah, we're not we're not changing that. Mm. Yeah. But we know how to teach it in a yeah. way that breaks it down to building block education. So mm. you give yeah. them let's Gem, it's exactly what you said. You give them the first thing first, then when they have that, you give them the next thing mm. and the next and the next and the next. When I learned, when you learned, Ian, when you learned, you got the last thing first. Yeah. <laughs> and then the thing before that and the thing before that. And they actually never got to the first thing, which was how to breathe. Yeah. Yeah. And understand is it's going real yeah. back to basics and understanding how you do that to control yourself underwater and breathing, you know, as a relatively new diver, that wasn't it didn't all click in until a lot further into yeah. you diving. Yeah. So yeah. you spent 30 dives on learning. What mm. your instructor taught you. Mm. Hope, hopefully it wasn't you, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it, it and it's like anything that you're learning, if you do the basics first, you you are it is the building blocks that you mm -hmm. start from the very bottom and then go up. And if you can't understand the basics, how are you gonna advance? It's mm. impossible. Mm. It's impossible. It just doesn't work that way. And this is, so let's go back to coaching for a minute because this is part of it, right? Yeah. So in the coaching program, what happens is all of the UTD scuba instructors are UTD scuba coaches and the dive masters are, are coaches. Although the dive masters can only take certified divers in the water, of course. So, and then the students are clients, right? It's the same relationship that I have with my cycling coach, right? I'm yeah. the client, he's the coach. In this case, in scuba, I'm the instructor, but I'm the coach. You're the student, but you're the client. So it's semantics, but we've changed the nomenclature a little bit. So we can kind of delineate what the relationship is because I don't want it to feel like a student instructor relationship. I yeah. want it to feel like a client coach relationship because that is much more symbiotic. Yeah. Like I work hard with my coach, not for my coach on cycling. Yeah. My scuba coaching clients work hard in concert with me and collaborate with me as a guide for their scuba diving. So the first mm -hmm. thing we tell people is we're slowing this process down. First of all, we try to take certification off the table, right? Certification and training are completely different. So the coaching program is really more based on, on training. Yeah. Most of the people who come in have heard enough of our podcast and our noise and our stuff to understand that this is about becoming a better scuba diver. It's not necessarily about becoming a more certified diver, although we have used it for that, right? We had, I think, three clients came in with an instructor. I think he was down in Florida specifically to become open water divers. Mm -hmm. And he took them through like a six month program, which is awesome. 
Yeah. Right. So they spent six months becoming open water divers that gave them so much time to see out of the box. They did the online content to get to their certification goal. But, you know, the, their homework was, you know, create spreadsheets about your equipment. So you knew what you had. Listen to this podcast. Check out this video. You know, do this homework. Do that. Do the other thing. So they, by the time they were done, they had scuba integrated into their lifestyle mm. and they were they became amazing scuba divers because they learned how to dive first. Yeah. Of course. And then, you know, a few months later, they did a few more dives with their coach instructor. And then they started diving by themselves and they left the program. And it's amazing. I'm so grateful for that group. Yeah. Cause that was early on and they really, they were our like, okay, this model really works. Mm. But they could take that further though. I, I presume sure. with the coach. Or oh, sure. another coach, and then move up or mm -hmm. gain more experience and more uh, understanding, so they could then go on to do deeper dives, maybe tech dive and things mm -hmm. like that. I yeah. have one guy who started with me recreationally, yeah, and we got him through the whole program, and he was a new diver. I don't think he had a hundred dives, and he decided after about four or five months of this, he wanted to do tech. So we, we bump him up to the tech program, give him all that content, start putting him through a tech academic program, increase his skill level, tighten up his tolerances. Then he went off to one of our UTD instructors and joined a tech class and got tech certified. Now, what I started to do with him, he, he's an SSI instructor or something else. I don't know. But I think he's going to be an amazing UTD instructor. So I started, we do a calendar for everybody. And every week we update the calendar and the calendar has workouts on it. And those workouts yeah. are videos, chapters, whatever they have to be. I started sneaking in our instructor development chapters for him. Mm -hmm. Hey, check this out. This is why we teach. Check this out. This is how we teach buoyancy. Hey, check this out. This is the evolution of how we came to this, which is the story I just told you. Yeah. And so now he's stepped up and he's becoming a UTD instructor. And mm -hmm. it's been a very organic simple and very elegant process to get him from a hundred dives, you know, to be this really experienced recreational diver to now be this new tech diver. And he's, you know, digging that like crazy. And now he's slowly becoming an instructor, but you know, we'll take two years to do this. Yeah. Mm. Cause who cares? What's the rush? Yeah. Yeah. And maybe that saying what's the rush is maybe the danger of other agencies that you feel that you've got to progress through all these different levels to get to this stage. That's we have I a think... very, very hard and fast rule that we never say anything bad about anybody else. Mm, so I yeah. can't talk really about other no, agencies, but, but I, I can talk about a $99 open water class and it's the, the it's lack of value in general. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. I think especially with uh, taking things further in diving, um, I'm thinking about like tech diving, I could see with other agencies um, that is possible to do the course and come through it and still not be totally clear on the actual fundamentals, especially when, you know, you're talking about pressure and, and deep decompression and times and things like that. You know, somebody could get through the course and be qualified, but actually do they totally understand it? Just because tick boxes. Is, yeah, but well, you've got a short time frame, haven't you, mm. you know, with some agencies. And, um, Ian, just to hear you saying that is terrifying. But it's possible. Yeah. Oh, I think it's, it's possible. Uh, no, no, no. It's way past possible. It's for sure true. Yeah. But it happens. Uh, daily. Mm. You know, I mean, we have this all, this thing also that, you know, we realize the limitations of a, of a short course. Right. And we, you know, we do coaching, but we also do short courses still. If somebody wants to come in and take a, a five or six day tech class, no problem. We do it all the time. But what the instructors know and what the instructors are trained to, to know is that we can't make you into a competent technical diver in five days. No. Mm -hmm. What we can do is make you safe enough to practice. Yeah. Right. So if you're careful, if you stay within your limits, if you do what we tell you and you slowly expand your tech diving, so when you're cut loose, take your deco bottle, but only go to 100 feet, 30 meters. Don't go into deco, but yeah. do it like it's a deco dive. Do yeah. five of those, eight of those. You know, you don't have to spend the money on helium. You can do them on nitrox. You can do them on air. It doesn't matter. But 
practice properly what we taught you in the class and then dip your toe in. Oh, let's try 130 feet, you know, mm -hmm. 39 meters. And let's see what it's like to actually go into deco without my instructor there yeah. and have that legitimate ceiling that if you go through, you can get hurt, right? Mm -hmm. Get that feeling. And I remember when I was becoming a tech diver and I did it before UTD was even a dream, um, but I had a good instructor and, you know, he was able to show me the reality of what it was like for the first time to be effectively in an overhead environment, even though you can see the surface, right? You just can't go to it, right? Mm -hmm. So it changes that whole perspective on, on diving where you, your problems now have to be solved underwater because the surface is no longer an option. Yeah. So that, that ability to think like that is something we have to train into people and you can't train that in a week. It's, no. just, it's impossible. It's too big to consciousness change. So that we just teach you how to practice that safely and properly and then move it forward. Now in coaching, it's great because, you know, every time you do a dive, you come back to the coach. Let me see the dive. Let me see your dive plan. Let me see how it went. How do you feel? How was your deco? How'd you feel at the end of the dive? How'd you feel on dive number two? You know, how much gas did you use? Did you, did you have any oxygen left over when you were done or did you just suck the bottle dry? You know, we can then we can take apart all these things over a yeah. period of a couple of months while somebody really gets dialed in to do this. And then it's like, awesome. You are styling. Move yeah. forward, but stay within your zone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's kind of getting, putting limits in things, isn't it? Or, or knowing your limits. It's teaching someone their limits. Mm. Right. I just saw an article this morning come across on Facebook from um, a friend of mine. And it was really talking about the zero to hero thing and the fact that people are certifying divers um, who are then diving past their limits. Ian, it's exactly what you were talking about a minute yeah. ago. It's like, and and there's no way to prevent that, right? None of us are the scuba police. No. It's not what we're for. Our job is to make you the safest diver you can be. And, you know, we just found a way to do it by slowing the process down, mm. you know, yeah. and not chasing a card. Yeah. So if people are interested in this program um, and they haven't heard of your agency before, mm -hmm. how do they kind of get involved if they're kind of with another agency, say, and do they just kind of contact you and sign up for one of the courses? Yeah. Just shoot us a note. If So the coaching program, it's a very personalized program, mm -hmm. right? Very, I think in the time that we've done it, maybe one person has signed up without talking to us first. Okay. And and that person, you know, we found out, listened to like 60 of our podcasts <laughs> and then <laughs> thought it was, might be a good idea. But um, yeah, no, just hit the website, utdscubadiving.com. There's a big button on the front that says scuba coaching and, you know, read that and then call us, pick up the yeah. phone, send an email. We'll set up a call and, and really let's define if this is the good program for you, because it's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, I've talked to quite a few people who have called that says really interesting and for one reason or another, it's not the model for them. Now, we've priced it so money is pretty much never a barrier, right? It's varies between like 120 and $200 a month, depending upon what level you are. And so we've taken money out of the picture. When someone says, well, I can't afford it. It's like, look, if you want to try it, commit to three months, cost you mm -hmm. 500 bucks. Yeah give it a shot. You know, you're going to spend $500 on a dive computer that we're going to save you because you don't need that thing anymore. Right. We'll save you more money than you spend on us for sure. Yeah. Um, and it's one of the first things we do. Literally it's one of the first questions I ask people when they come in or when they're thinking, it's like, you need to be transparent with me about your dive budget. I mm -hmm. want to know how much money you're willing to spend this year, next year, and the year after on diving and no faking. You know, if you have a spouse who's going to complain about this, I want to know it. You know, if you ha I had one student a long time ago who had what he called this black ops fund. So <laughs> right. and it was like his little secret bank account that he used for scuba that he didn't tell his wife about. It's like, look, I don't want to be party to this relationship. No. No. <laughs> so we're really open about the money. But I do know that, you know, if you call us first and you get in the scuba pro coaching program, you're, we're going to save you more than you're going to spend. Yeah. Mm. So would a student do some kind of like check dive first to see what sort of level they're at? So this goes back to an early question 
um, Gemma, that you asked, I don't recall if it was before or after we started recording, but just do the, does the coach have to be in the same town? And yes. the answer is no. Right. So most of the coaches don't live in the same area as their clients. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the program is delivered online. It's delivered on an online calendar. That calendar has a communications texting thing in it. So every day the clients are charged to send the coach a note how to go, what are your questions, the coaches answer back, things okay. like that. And then so and then we manage the in-water part of it separately. So, you know, I have somebody on the East Coast who needs a, a UTD essentials class like now. And so, you know, I'm in San Diego, she's on the other side of the country, we're getting that organized with a UTD instructor over there. Um, but what I do see from my coaching clients is video as often as they can. Right. So go in a pool, go in a lake with a buddy, go someplace where there's decent visibility. And here are your exercises for this dive. You know, here's your buoyancy exercise for this dive. And like all of our dives, go have fun for half an hour and then come back and on your way up or on the line, whatever you're doing, do your skills. Yeah. So let me see 10 minutes of buoyancy control. We do something called position and hold where you you kick up to a line, like we put a bolt snap on a line yeah. and you kick up just until the line touches your mask and then you back kick a meter. Oh, that's tricky. Kick a meter and you back kick a meter. Yeah. And you do this like 20 times. So buoyancy, position, the whole thing. And, you know, if you bend the line, eh. you see, no one taught me how to back kick. That's just something I've kind of picked up. I, you know, I hear that all the time and I think that's incredible because there's no more important kick. Yeah. And that's just something I've kind of managed to, I don't know how I sort of kind of started doing it and, um, and now can do it. Um, but no one actually assumed me. It wasn't part of the, it's not been on any course or anything. And Gemma, you, you know, something that we haven't practiced at no. for Gemma. Yeah. yeah. You know? no, it, and even it's... frog kicking, you know, I'm just. Right. Right. Well, do and we don't let come into this. Hmm? Does Sorry? the type of fins come into this? Because yeah. some oh, fins. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, sure. Like I use, I've got um, force fin, accelerating fins. And I find them a lot easier to use, uh, especially to go backwards than my, I've got some Apex RK3s, which are uh, really rigid and heavy. Um, and I find them a lot harder to go backwards than my force fins. We're still kind of on the jet fin model. Yeah. Remember the jet fins, the old yeah. Scuba Pro jet fins? That model seems to just be the best overall. Yeah. And now you can get them that they're lighter, you know, so they're not quite as heavy and, and, you know, you can use them with a three millimeter wetsuit, but, but um, yeah, the fins are important and the technique is important. Mm -hmm. I do wish, I don't have a lot of regrets about how we did UTD, but I do wish that we never called it a back kick. I wish that we called it a positioning kick Mm -hmm. because that's really what it is. When you think about it, it's more about holding still Yeah. because in your flutter kick, if you're flutter kicking, no, no matter what you do with your feet, if you itch, if you twitch, if you anything, you move forward. Yeah. Right. And while you're moving forward, you're pushing water down. So you're silting. So it's a one direction kick only. And wiggling your feet makes you go forward. You know, moving yeah. your shoulder makes you go forward. It's true. So the only way to not go forward is to do a kick that prohibits that which is this back kick, this positioning kick. So when we're holding still in the water, um, we're back kicking all the time, constantly, right? Because it's not as efficient as a front frog kick, yeah. but it holds you in position. If you happen to you know, go too far back, it takes like one little flick frog kick to send you back forward to hold position. Mm-hmm. So that kind of positioning, when you think about it, instructors need it, photographers need it, scientific divers need it, you know, you need it when you're coming up to a line. If you yep. don't want to be grabbing onto a line to do your ascent, um, you need it all the time. It should be the first. And like I said, in, in this ESM course, this extreme scuba makeover course, it's pretty much the first thing we teach in terms of kicking is let's show you on the shore how you're going to back kick. We do no fins, you know, just feet, horizontal trim, feet up, feet flat, back kick you go. Wow. Mm-hmm. 
We can teach Amazing. it in five minutes. We can teach it a back kick in five minutes. Yeah. But it is the theory of it, understanding that theory to then apply when you're in the water or have got your fins yeah. on. But the theory doesn't mean anything if you don't learn it properly. Yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, it's like that joke about, um, you know, how's it, you can't teach someone to speak French by screaming at them in French. Mm -hmm. Right. You can't teach someone to back kick by screaming at them. Just back kick. Just back kick. Yeah. Because <laughs> you don't doesn't know. Work. No. Yeah. I mean, we broke it down. You know, you do this, you do that, you do the other thing. And then all of a sudden you're not going forward. If you're mm -hmm. not going forward, you're back kicking. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And do you like find it. your students, because obviously some people are really good with theory and reading and practical stuff. And then other people can only learn doing the doing. Yeah. rather than the theory and mm -hmm. do you find that you get a mix of students from both kind of sides oh yeah absolutely and we teach it in our idc right um learning types kinesthetic visual auditory all of that we we go through all that with people so when you're in a class and you're staring at people and you guys have all done this you know and you know somebody's doodling but they're listening somebody's furiously writing because they can't remember anything. i'm the doodler you're the doodler <laughs> and you know somebody else is sitting there saying all right i just got to go try this mm -hmm. right all these different learning styles and uh and we we present that theory to our instructors to be alert for this because if you only teach to one style it doesn't work for everybody else in the class so we want our instructor candidates and our instructors to be able to identify you know what's going on among these personality types mm -hmm. and these learning styles in the class so sure yeah it's very yeah. proactive it is. Yeah, yeah. flexible. It is. Mm. Yeah. But it works. Mm. And and everybody teaches the same parameters. Yeah. Teaches the same way, teaches in the same order. You know, even in the critical skills area where we're simulating failures, in that playbook I talked about earlier, we wrote yeah. down each class and what is appropriate as a critical skill for each level. So open water doesn't get surprise failures right? mm -hmm. in a, doing an air share in our open water class. It's like, we swim up to you and say, Hey, you get ready. You're out of gas. And then you turn and you share gas. When we get up to our tech courses, we're doing that as a surprise. The instructor is tapping you on the shoulder and say, you're out of gas right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Solve that problem. And another problem comes up. Okay. A mask comes off something yeah. like that. But we wrote down what order to prescribe these failures in. So it's not random. You're not just throwing shit at your students until they yeah. fall apart and come to the surface. You know, we have a very focused order of training to bring students from A to B in this, you know, very structured program that everybody follows. Yeah. Um, and it works. That's the crazy yeah. thing. Mm. It just works. Yeah. Just out of interest, do you um do you teach full face di full face mask diving? We do have a little tiny public safety division right um and we don't really teach public safety diving we just teach them to become better divers and and we do do some of that with full face mask but we do it on the rebreather model okay so you know we're diving with a long hose and a necklace right yeah so mm -hmm. long hose is primary that's what you donate and then you go to your necklace if you need to we do the same thing with full face where we attach the full face mask to that short necklace hose yeah. And so you're still carrying a um a long hose that you can donate. Okay. So that's the only difference. But that's the model we use teaching on rebreathers when you've got a, a bailout valve, a BOV. But on an open circuit, you you don't teach it. We can. You can. We don't come across it much, and it's mostly only the public safety divers who want. And it. do you put your alternate on a long hose then? You could call it that. Right, because you still have a long hose and then the full face mask is connected to the necklace hose, the short yeah. hose, because you're never going to donate your full face mask. No, no, that's right. No. So if somebody needs gas, you're going to unclip and donate your yeah. long hose to them while you stay on the face mask. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you go off your face mask, you're not only out of gas, you're blind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the problem but, with it, right? Yeah, I was just intrigued by what you said, because um, I... I only associate um, and have done through my own, uh, my experience has gone to twin set diving mm -hmm. um, and not tech. I haven't done tech. Um, 
and I haven't dived with a rebreather. So I associated that long hose with from the um from your mouth that you'd give that as an in an out of air scenario. Correct. And, you'd go uh, to and your I was nipples. just then wondering whether because we're now starting to go into diving on with full face masks. Yeah. And this is a whole new thing for us. And I was just then wondering whether it's something that should be a consideration for us is to change our hose uh, for our alternates to then go on to a longer hose, maybe. I don't know. I mean, that's how we do it. So we've decided that that's the model because, you know, team diving is about getting the team out of the water safely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. We don't teach solo diving. We don't teach independent doubles because it's too inconsistent among people. You yeah. know, on side mount that you, you know, what hose are you on? What are you donating? The whole thing is about the team. Yeah. Right? Unified mm. team diving. Um, <laughs> we used to have a joke called it's unified team diving. It's not unified. Go screw off by yourself diving. <laughs> so, um, so the, the donation model becomes the, kind of the core of team diving. How do you get mm. your buddy out? Yeah. Right? Um, and there's a million pieces parts to that, right? The long hose is on, you know, the right post because in a cave it can roll off. And if you roll off, you want to roll off your necklace, not the guy, other guy's gas. Yeah. You can turn yours back on, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, if you're doing full face, you know, we have a procedure for it that gives you the ability to donate safely. Mm. Um, and of course, if your full face just starts free flowing and you've got to switch to your own, uh, your own necklace because you're on that long hose clipped off you don't even have to unclip it you can take off the full face mask and start breathing while you're sorting out a spare mask and things like that yeah, right? yeah. you don't ever want you blind and out of gas yeah that's right right those are the models and so in a in a standard half mask you're either blind or you're out of gas yeah. <laughs> you don't get them both mm. um and so yeah, we have a procedure for it. But like I said, the only people who seem to use it, at least in the around here in the US, is um, the public safety guys who have the comms and all that. So yeah. like commercial divers. Yeah, fire yeah. police. Yeah. 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 We don't touch commercial at all, but mm -hmm. fire police, some scientific divers, interactive mm -hmm. divers and aquariums, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So do you have any um instructors in the UK? Hmm. It's a tough story. <laughs> we <laughs> you have a thing in the u in the uk called the hse yeah. right yeah yeah i haven't wanted to navigate that quicksand swamp yet okay so, <laughs> so the answer no, that's is no. fair enough yeah no, no, no we no. have a ring of instructors around the uk mm -hmm. yeah and we have a guy from ireland who's uh joining an idc with us in april okay but, uh, but until i i get the medal to you know, I need an the office box, there. The boxes ticked I again, need a presence. I need jump. a sub company. I need like, <sighs> yeah. So yeah, yeah no, yeah. No. And they're and, you know they're making the world safer, I guess. And I uh, do you find that you're getting photographers, underwater photographers, interested in coming along and learning? Yeah, a lot. Because a lot of them like to be on their own, don't they? Yeah, but we don't let them. Yeah, that's what I was they wondering. They come through the program. We actually encourage photographers to have a team of three. Really? Yeah, because the buddy of the photographer is not getting paid any attention to. Yes. So we like a team of three for photography. And, you know, with good buoyancy control, you're not screwing up the environment. You know, you're mm. just letting the guy with the camera go first. But then you have a team taking care of each other and him or her. Yeah, that's good, that isn't time. it? Yeah. I've it got is. another, yeah. So I've got another interesting question for you then, okay. which kind of uh leads lead has led me on to that what is your view then of a adult diver going into the say the sea and with a new child uh new child diver so it's father well, and son go into the sea the father is is experienced let's say in his 40s 50s goes into the sea, takes his young son for a dive in the sea. And the son is just basically an open water diver. What's your view on that? Well, that will never happen with us because we don't teach anybody under 15. So what's the youngest? 15. 
So mm-hmm. so he takes a 15 year old. Well, we we just decided that at at age 15 that person is got enough life experience to take care of somebody. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. To share gas and to help somebody to the surface. 10 year old <laughs> not mm-hmm. a chance. You know, the 10 year old is diving solo. I mean the, yeah. the parent is diving solo with the 10 year old. Yeah. Yeah. And and you know, that's you know, you got two situate you got two kits you got two divers you got two systems that can have failures and if the failure happens on the parent the kid can't do anything yeah i say and if the kid does go to the surface then what's he gonna it's just like we just decided a long time ago there's not enough research on developing bodies under pressure yeah that we've been able to find we don't know anything about bone necrosis and development of children we don't know anything about what the only thing we know about kids is that you know, I have an 11 year old grandson. There's no way I'm taking him diving with me because I'm as likely to have something fail as anybody. Right. Yeah. I mean, hoses break, shit breaks. I don't want him to have to like figure it out and, and donate to me mm. or get me back to a boat or yeah. anything like that. So yeah, we don't, we don't touch it and I don't, yeah. I don't get involved in it. I don't discuss it. You know, I know there are agencies that teach people down to 10 years old, we don't go down that road and we don't really even talk about it. When people call up and say, can I teach my kid? It's just like, nope. And I think this is where uh, a deeper issue comes from where um, let's say a certain male, and I only see, I, I've only seen it with, with men of men of a certain age think they're invincible in the water. And I think that comes right from the start of teaching and that's yeah. why they will yeah. take a young child into the sea because they th- don't see that there's an issue. No. So you know that line about pilots, right? There are old pilots and bold pilots, but yeah. no old bold pilots. Yeah. It's the same thing, right? And that's, that's what I was reading about this morning, about this you know zero to hero thing. So I think that we have created a model that because it's focused on team, Mm. that Mm. everybody has to participate that everybody has to be able to do everything but everything is assigned first right the three of us go into a dive you're the dive captain emma you're or Gemma, you're shooting the bag um and i'm going to whatever you know yeah yeah captain so everybody has a job everybody can do all the jobs but we define it so everybody has a role on a dive yeah and it, it it tends to eliminate a lot of that stuff now there are personalities, you know, we're dealing with, with, you know, the human condition. So certainly we're not going to get, you know, everybody's not going to come through as little perfect, you know, students for us, but we do not, uh, I don't know how to even say it. We just don't, we so don't condone that behavior that, that people find out what we're about and they go somewhere else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You know, we're not for everybody. We don't want to be for everybody. No, you know, we we're a boutique agency. Um, and, you know, there are people who just, you know, they want a $99 class or a 99 Yeah. Or well, they just want to get through it to do something, don't yeah. they? And get a card, right? And mm-hmm. go diving, you know, with their girlfriend in the Caribbean once and never dive again. Yeah. But mm-hmm. when you look at the scuba industry, this is another interesting thing. Is this a seven-hour podcast? <laughs> we can make it that. Um, the biggest issue that scuba is having right now is retention. Yeah. Right. People learn to dive. They go for four dives. They say, oh, God, it's cold. It's miserable. I don't enjoy it. I didn't learn properly. I'm mucking up the bottom. I'm not going back and doing that. Mm. You know, and then all of a sudden, either they don't buy gear and they don't continue to dive or they put their gear on eBay or something like that. Yeah. So, you know, our job is to make people love it. Yeah. 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 That's the key. And if you if you share it as a team sport, if you train properly, if you have you know, a guide or a mentor who is our coach, who provides you some accountability through the process of training. Um, If you trust your instructor, Mm -hmm. if you pay a decent amount of money for a class, so your highly trained instructor is getting a decent wage for the class and not $22, um, you know, then you're, you're creating value while you go. Yeah. You know, I mean, giving deals just 
on scuba is just to me it's it's a bad model because well, it sets it's up a bit like holiday it's... these holiday you know, a lot of people go on holiday don't they and they'll learn on holiday or they'll go for a, a tri dive and i'm think of one uh a few people we've spoken to um and uh have a bad experience and put don't some do off. It again yeah and, and it. never done, get back right? in the water 100 percent, and it's all about training yeah mm -hmm. right I mean, we don't do tri dives. We don't do discover scuba. We don't do kids. We just, you know, we, we treat it seriously. Yeah. And by treating it seriously, we can have 10 times more fun. Yes. Yeah. That's and, good money. and then it's that retention, isn't it? That you've got people that have got solid, solid yeah. foundations and they understand the whole process. Yeah. Our, I had our somebody... retention level is really high. Mm. I, I had somebody come for a, a tri dive a while back. And uh, she was going on holiday to Australia to dive, and she wanted to dive the Grand, uh, the Great Barrier Reef. Hadn't dived in about ten years, and uh, she was coming to do a tri dive. And I wouldn't sign her off because she wasn't safe. She wouldn't been. She wouldn't, she wasn't safe for herself. She wasn't safe for a buddy. Yeah. Um. You know. And I. I just didn't want to put my name to it to say that she was safe to go and dive in the Great Barrier Reef. She was literally, that was her next step, was to get on the plane to go there. And I was, and she thought that she could come, do a, hadn't dived for several years, come to a try to, a, a refresher, I meant, and um, and thought that would be okay. And I was like, no, uh, I'm not going to sign you off. I don't think it's, you're safe. And she was well, good not on happy you. at all. Good, yeah, good on you for being able to just hold firm to that because – likely she went to the next instructor probably mm -hmm. yeah you know paid the money and that was it yeah yeah, yeah. i mean yeah. we have students like that right who don't want to go through you know a slightly more advanced training procedure to become good divers so they go somewhere and they knock out a 99 dollars course yeah i've harped a lot on the 99 dollars thing this this <laughs> last few minutes but um and they get a certification card and who knows how they're trained mm -hmm. you know yeah yeah, no, it's really interesting. And it is. Uh, probably for our listeners, gives them it's kind of a refreshed view on things or, you know, you always know if you're not in the right place sometimes and maybe yeah. there might be some listeners yeah. that think that. I mean, that. we've been doing this for so long, Gemma, that it's just, it's just, it's just what we do. Mm. I mean, I don't, it, there's nothing out of the ordinary for what we do at UTD. I mean, this is just our daily, how we are. You know, yeah. we have instructors, they teach the same protocol. We take them from beginning to end. We certify them. We put them in the coaching program. I mean, this is just, you know, we train neutrally buoyant, all this other stuff. This is just what we do. We don't have any variability in it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if, if people come to it and want scuba as, you know, a piece of a lifestyle, if they want to use scuba for two different things, right? Go visit the world they can't normally see, mm -hmm. but also do something that's a little difficult that's challenging and then take that challenge and apply it to their, their life. Yeah. We're the place. Yeah. Right. Cause we're going to give you skills that are way beyond the water. We're going to give you team skills, life skills. We're going to give you communication skills. We're going to give you fun skills and, and it's way past just, you know, jumping in a puddle and, you know, seeing a fish and having a beer on the boat. You need to come to the UK. Yes. <laughs> get quite a lot of clients i think yeah, yeah i think so <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah well bring yeah. us over i mean i got a guy you know just a, a spit away in denmark yeah. ready to go yeah. yeah no well that would be yeah. Yeah, pretty cool yeah so with a lot of our obviously all our guests we always ask questions um some set questions so one of them is if you could take three people underwater diving they don't have to be divers they don't have to be part, you know, they don't have to be present. They can be past. What three or who would you take and why? You guys. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. that would be fun, right? That'd be cool. Yeah. yeah. Come to San Diego or I will, you know, bring a dry suit and every <laughs> undergarment I can find and come to the UK. Um, <laughs> so that would be fun. Um. You're the first person who's actually suggested that. Actually, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, really? there you go. <laughs> um, 
let's see, Leonard Cohen. Oh, okay. Who used to be my next door neighbor. Really? Yeah, he's since passed. But I think he's probably the most brilliant poet and mystic that yeah. the modern world has seen. And I think it would be awesome to give him that experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be really cool. I, wow. knew, I knew him I knew him pretty well. Um let me see. That's kind of three because you guys are two, yeah. but maybe the physicist Richard Feynman. Uh, yeah, good choice. Right? Yeah. For, he's probably a diver, but you know, he would he sees things. I've read a bunch of his books and he sees things from these bizarre different eyes mm. that nobody else has. Yeah. I think that'd be really interesting. The people I want to take diving are the ones who will see the, the world underwater through eyes that may be unique in some way or another. Mm. Yeah. No, that's good. Good answers. Good answers. Yeah. So what gets you out of your comfort zone? Oh, you know, I race a bike. <laughs> Everything <laughs> gets me out of my comfort zone. I think, um, I'm out of my comfort zone whenever I'm looking at a race or a workout that I know is harder than a, than I can do and having to do it. Yeah. You know, comfortable being uncomfortable mm. is uncomfortable for me. Yeah. But then when you do it, do you feel like, wow, you've done it? Oh yeah. You yeah. know, you know, get you on a podium. It's awesome. Right. I mean, this process, we, we didn't really get a chance to talk too much about process versus outcome, but you know, coaching is of course a process model certification is an outcome. And um, I've been very focused on process, both in scuba and in cycling. Yeah. But um, outcome is becoming important to me now too, right? So I'm understanding as I go as I go more toward outcome in cycling, which means I'm more focused on being successful at these record attempts I'm doing. I'm more focused on getting on the podium on races. I'm also starting to apply that to scuba and saying, okay, I've been process oriented for so long in scuba now. I've almost turned off my interest in certification mm. but i'm turning back on that interest a little bit to make sure people understand that goals are real yeah that goals realistic goals are realistic and that it many many people are driven by those goals mm. so um yeah getting people uncomfortable comfortable being uncomfortable i think is important to me and i think giving people the opportunity to reach their goals by acknowledging that those goals are real and, and, and viable and important. Um, I think that's, that's kind of where I am on that. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Good. Very good. Yeah. So if, if you could give anybody some kind of nugget of life from your heart, what would you say to them, whether they're a new diver, an experienced diver, or not even a diver, is there anything that you hold, you know, really true to yourself that you would then, say that's my nugget yeah that's an easy one just say yes mm. you know when the universe throws something at you say yes first yeah you know? and then if then if it does then if it's hard it's hard if it's not yep. doable it's not doable but just go you know, for it it's like if you don't ask the question the answer is an automatic no <laughs> you know yeah so say yes first yeah that is very true that and richard branson says exactly the same thing always if an opportunity comes or your way always say yes and then find out how to do it afterwards yeah yeah, yeah. that good. is that good is good um okay brilliant answer and finally um so we're going to give you a billboard we're going to give you a big space that you can put something on it it can be a picture it can be a photo a statement a you uh, a, a video whatever you want it's your space to advertise something or say something to the whole wide world, what are you going to put on it? Well, you know, I used to live in LA, which is billboard capital of the universe. <laughs> and it's just like, there's so much noise and it was always so hard to cut through. I think I would take a giant billboard and project it from space and it would just say, breathe. Yeah. Why breathe? Well, first of all, slow down, take a breath, right? Mm -hmm. There's that piece of it. In scuba, breathe so you can be a scuba diver, not so you're crashing into the bottom and you don't know why. Yeah. But mostly it's just slow down. I mean, we're going a million miles an hour every day, right? I got this phone. I've got this phone. I've got an iPad. I've got two screens. I've got four laptops. I've got an electronic life. There's a book that I read a long time ago called The Speed of Time. Okay. It was so interesting because it defined 
the difference in time through the ages that might not be i see you're writing it down that might not be the exact title i can figure it out for you if you want but you know a hundred years ago you know sending a letter would be by cable mm. so you'd have to go to the cable place did it did it did it did goes to the other place gets delivered or someone and now it's like done then, right yeah yeah 400 years ago if you wanted to send a letter it took like a year so time has changed exponentially yeah and and really fast i mean it's like really fast now and i think the best thing we can do for ourselves and for each other and for the world is just slow down and take a breath yeah i like that yeah, yeah. very good yeah no very good yeah and i've got one just a follow-up question i'm just out of interest um, have you ever, have you written any books yourself? So, um, you know, I had a long career in the film business before I did UTD. So I've written a bunch of screenplays, none of which have been produced. Well, one of which was produced. Um, I've written, co-written all of the content for UTD. So we've written all of the course material and the books that go with the UTD stuff. Yeah. Um, I wrote a book called Scubatics. Okay. Right here. This is cool. Are we on video or audio yeah. only on this podcast? Well, no, we can put some video yeah. in as so, well. So, yeah. scubatics. So, we did yeah. this a million years ago because in one of my former lives, I was a competition aerobatic pilot. I flew, wow. Really? I flew small airplanes in competition. No way. Loops and rolls and shit like that. Maverick. So, we got Maverick on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Maverick on. Yeah, no thanks. No wars. <laughs> Talk um, to me, Goose. Yeah. But we we had this idea we wanted to come up with some kind of competition that scuba was involved in. And, you know, I'm a competitor. I'm an athlete. So um, we made up this thing called Scubatics, which is underwater acrobatic competition with a scooter. And nah. because I came to this from aerobatic flying, I was able to write a manual for it. And in the back of it, it's got all of the um, the diagrams of the, where is it? of the maneuvers and you can see it's got like you know we define loops no rolls, all this other stuff in the water we did contest we developed a contest um protocol for it how to train judges the whole thing well have we, we not built all this no one's ever heard of it because we did it in 2007 in 2008 we started utd and this thing got shelved uh, uh -huh. well this is not yet yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I still have one copy left of the book <laughs> if we decide we want to do it again. So yeah, I, I wrote that. <laughs> wow. I made up a sport. Yeah. We, had, well, we never we had know big because you know, there's even our local dive center are really into the scooters now, the Suex yeah. scooters. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they're becoming very popular. Well, have them give me a call and we can maybe do something with scubatics because it's the perfect winter thing. Yeah. All you need is a pool. Mm. There you yeah. go. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> I'm that. sure that that would be really you easy to get on Amazon. Yeah, there's a fun factor in scuba diving that I think is overlooked. Everybody takes it so seriously, right? I mean, it's serious, right? You can get killed or worse, mm -hmm. almost killed. But the 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 fun factor it has to be super high, or what's the point, right? It's why would recreation. you do it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Why would you do it if it's not fun, right? Yeah. You don't have to go scuba diving, yeah. right? It, you, your your life's not going to change if you don't go scuba diving. Well, mine might because it's my job, but. Yeah, but then again, it's another skill, isn't it? If if you yeah. don't scuba dive and then you scuba dive, it's another skill that you've learned that makes you a better, more you know, detailed person. Yeah. Human, a better yeah. human. And that's yeah. why I think that I'm still doing what I'm doing. And I love it so much is because I'm able to again, learning this through cycling, be able to take what we're teaching people in scuba and say, look, this is bigger than scuba. Mm. Go home, cook dinner like you're a team diver. You know, when's the last time you cooked with your wife or your husband? You know, apply the stuff to your life and make your life better. Mm. That's yeah. why we do it. It's life skills, isn't it? And it's it fascinating, is. isn't it? I yeah. see people sometimes and you know, well, especially like if I've done shore cover and uh, there's a group, there's groups in the water and we're doing, you know, shore cover. And you see some people and they come out and they've got all this gear, the faces are bright red. And, uh, and I, I remember there was a guy and he must have been mid 60s. And he had a twin set and he had all this weight on him and he was clambering up. 
And I said, do you want, do you want a hand? I, I said, you okay? And he said, no, no, I'm all right. And his face was honestly scarlet. <laughs> and I thought, you know what? How is that enjoyable? How is that, you know, fun? You got all yeah. this gear and weight upon you. You know, sometimes, Ian, it's so interesting you say that, right? You get back on a boat from a dive, right? There's like a cattle boat, right? With 40 people or something. And I used to be very judgmental about the ones who would like get on the boat, grab a beer and a cigarette, sit around, then fall asleep. And, you know, oh, they're terrible divers. They did, you know, crappy ascent. So they're tired and they're who knows what. And now they're drinking and now there's, it was me judgmental, right? Mm. And then I realized they were probably having a lot more fun than I was, yeah. you know, in my little twin set and, and, you know, doing a serious dive and doing perfect descents and, you know, it's just, you got to look at everybody and say, okay, are you having fun? And maybe that's what we need to be using as a measure. Yeah. I think it gets, the fun gets missed sometimes. It does, right? We're yeah. so serious. Yeah. And happy people are better people. Happy people are better people. And here we go again, right? Take the yeah. fun you learned in scuba diving and bring it home. Yeah, bring it to work. Bring it yeah. to your kids. Bring it to your grandkids. Yeah, yeah. because then Fun. it's infectious to everybody it else, is. and you know you can, uh, yeah, sort of make somebody yeah. else's life a little bit better. Yeah, a little yeah. bit happier. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great place to end it. Isn't it, it is, isn't it? Yeah. That's fun. I'm so glad you guys um, invited me on. Yeah. So if people want to find more about your agency, where's the best place for people to find out more about you and then maybe contact you? Yeah, utdscubadiving.com. Super easy. You can hit the contact right. form or it's just jeff at utdscubadiving.com. Um, we've got a podcast that is, um, I don't know, 60 episodes deep or something like that about all mm -hmm. sorts of crazy stuff. We do a, a, a thing called the most obscure questions in scuba diving. So I think we're up to like episode 10 of that within the podcast wow. series. So we just take questions and we go after them and there's some really interesting stuff on that. So Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, we'll have, we'll have a listen to them. Yeah. Brilliant. That's yeah. fun. Yeah, well, we'll put all the links in the show notes so that everybody can now go there and uh, click the links and uh, find out more about you. But yeah, it's been really interesting, Jeff. It has, thank yeah. Thank you very much really for good. Yeah. coming we'll, on the podcast. We'll, yeah, thank you. We'll, we'll uh, republish this on our on our podcast channel also. I think yeah. thank people you. will find it yeah. interesting. So yeah. Yes, yeah. It's yeah, been a real learned thing, actually. It's been you know, really interesting. So thank you very much for coming on. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm grateful every day. Uh, brilliant. Well, what oh. can we say? That was, that was <laughs> awesome, wasn't it? Um, fa absolutely fascinating. Uh, I love the, I've took some notes. Um, where do we start? You know, I just thought, wow, that's a, such a different way. Yeah, and I wasn't the way I thought it was going to be. Um, mm. And I thought there was going to be a lot more sort of What's the word? With more jargon and thing, and it wasn't. Is there a real? It was more life earth? skills. Yes, and I, the, about the joy of diving, and I, and I, I do think that gets forgotten mm -hmm. as people's experience and they want to um, progress in their career of diving. The joy sometimes gets lost. Like yeah, the sparkle goes. Yeah, I'm not you saying you just... can't have enjoyment in in deep water and 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 in the tech world of thing i'm that's not what i'm saying but i think sometimes people overcomplicate and we're seeing that mm. haven't we you know yeah. um why are they in the twin set oh because you know they thought that'd be the good thing when they're down at 10 meters yeah you know yeah, yeah. and it it's, is again you know it comes back to that word coaching that yeah he, it's not a case of tick the boxes, you've done that, move on to the next module. It is about coaching to make you better, not faster. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I thought that was really good. And I think the problem is with a lot of the agencies, you know, they have got really big and there's a lot of people involved in them. There's a lot of money involved and, you know, I, I'm not going to name names, but we can all think of one particular, you know, and it's all about the sales, you know, yeah. because they are, they are a big beast. And you want, and I think from what Jeff has said, you treated as an individual, you are, um, everything is sculpted around you, yeah. your yeah. program, whereas other agencies, 
it is just this is how it is. There are and similarities you... though with some others, like uh, you know, if you take Bizac, you know, it's a very club orientated way mm. of teaching, you know, and you build up uh, a rapport with people, you know, who are going to teach you the diving. And I think there'll be Bizac divers shouting us going you know we're all friendly and all that Mm -hmm. and you know their relationship is all about the club and it's a club way of teaching i think there's some similarities there uh you know dive raid another one you know very a smaller organization and it's very low-key we had steve lewis on yeah um, and he was telling us you know very similar things and i think also um uh ssi where you can break it up make yes and we've seen that Mm. from talking to yeah people from ssi very much there isn't the coaching side of things but then you can break it up it's more manageable less it's smaller sections i guess Um, yeah yeah and then you've got like uh uh itd and tdi where that's more of a uh that's probably more closer to the coaching side Mm. of things yeah, but I think everybody's going to have their opinion and they're entitled to their own opinion of yeah. what works for them. But talking to Jeff has opened up something that maybe people don't know about. Yeah. And, you know, it's given them another channel of thought. It made me think of a conversation I had um, a few weeks ago, and I told you about this when, and I won't name their names, when somebody asked me about their, their, thing, their son, um, who's I think 15, 16, is thinking about learning to dive and they're going Mm. somewhere really nice on holiday Mm. and are they best to learn abroad or are they best to learn here and i said to him well do is it just that they're looking to dive abroad in the where it's all lovely and sunny and warm waters and or are they actually interested in diving because if they are actually interested in diving and long-term diving i'd learn in the uk mm, i know it's a bit t- i know it's tougher you know and we don't ha- always have lovely clear waters and that and warm waters but long term i think they would get more out of it because what if they go to uh somewhere on holiday and the father and son go and learn and then they have a bad experience because they're paying mm. the money they want to get the 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 ticket over two days and that doesn't work out well, it could again put them off for life yeah this comes down to the whole point that you're doing it to get through it you're not yes. doing it for the experience exactly and, yeah. yeah and that's two different things mm. and it all comes down to what is ingrained in you from the people that you talk to so say you want you think you might want to learn scuba diving well people are going to say well you've got to do this course this course and this course and is this why, I should have asked him actually, is this why some people go through the, the quick process of over a course of a weekend, they learn the dive, and then they never you never see them again? No. And you're like, where, where have they gone? So yeah. they spent the money, put all the effort into learning to dive, and then where what what's happened to them where's is there a follow-up do they get called back you know hey mm-hmm. not seeing you around not seeing you at the local dive site I, have you done any more diving um mm-hmm. you know come back and maybe do some more diving with the with the club yeah and, and we know everybody learns differently how many times have people guests on the podcast say you've got to do things at your own pace don't do anything until you're comfortable to move on to the next stage you don't have that with certain setups because you've got to get through it to do something else i have been on you know uh schools you know where the the students are not been strong enough to get through the weekend you know and it's quite rightly so that either they've said you know what i can't go any further i'm not coming back Mm. i need to do some more work in the pool or the instructor said you know what you need to go back to the pool and we'll do some work together in the pool and then come back to the open water yeah. and finish or do some of these skills again. And that's fair enough because people have good days and bad days, but also should that process have started earlier where the decision... The time, it's not the setup. No, no. 
no no it's very um interesting i also thought it was an interesting point um which need to probably we can consider um you know for the future is well one for you uh and two for me to practice um learning to um reverse kick yeah and so position kick yes as as you said so i'm what 60 dives in never had any tuition about finning no i i had and that's something i just picked up no and that's no fault of anybody in particular it's not just be, it's not been part of a course. no it's not it's not so, not even what in what we call the advanced course it's, it's no. not you know and maybe it should mm-hmm. it should be show show students how to how to kick how back to move hooks, in the water how to position yeah. um and also i thought um for us personally for full face diving uh full face mask diving is maybe to consider a longer hose for alternate yes because even in the pool on we did our confined water when we were doing out of air scenario to take the alternate there's not much wiggle room is there no well there generally isn't but you know and that, it does work um for usual recreational diving but when it comes to if you're going out on a twin set you you, you have a, a extended load mm. hose yeah you know, you pass over the one that's in your mouth and that goes over your head and then you take the one that's in your on the your, necklace. On your necklace, yeah. Mm. Yeah, well, it's something to consider and maybe something that once we've got our sign off on full face, then we can look at hoses and look at maybe doing some scenarios. Well, he's going to send us some info, isn't he? So, um, you know, it's something to... Mm. To go through and consider, really. I thought yeah. that was quite an interesting point, but definitely um, something to work on is uh, reverse kick, position yeah. kicking. Because try and call it that rather than kicking back. Positioning, yes. yeah, positioning. Yeah. Okay, if you're a cave diver, one of the it's pretty essential, you know, isn't big, it? pretty essential skill, yeah, to be able to kick backwards. <laughs> yeah, but also if you're a photographer, like he said, you've got to have that kind of. Um, accuracy in the water if you're lining up to take a picture of something and you don't want to be bashing into other mm. people or bashing into yeah. the rock face or whatever yeah this is uh mm, interesting yep so another good podcast i think yeah yeah very good um okay well uh, we'll leave it there i think for now um if you've l- uh been listening and you got this far perhaps you can leave us a review uh hey how about send us a, a dm and uh you know, let us know what you think well you know was this in have you heard of utd scuba diving and uh, their way of coaching yeah. what do you think you know what's your thoughts um whether you're in the i know in the uk where there isn't anyone but in the us and other parts europe, of europe there is, uh, there is. Yeah. So uh, let us know what you think. That'd be really good to get your feedback. Have you enjoyed it? Um, if you've got some guests who you think would be really good to get them on and for us to talk to, let us have their names and uh, we'll get them booked up. Yeah, and we've obviously mentioned full face masks. So if you're a full face mask diver, drop us a message. Have a look at our social media. Yeah, and, uh, yeah we're just entering the journey. So yeah, any tips? Yeah, there'll be some stuff going on our website uh, because we've got some stuff to share about that um, over the coming well days and weeks. Really, yeah, that be all exciting stuff. Yeah, so uh, look for that. But right now, I think that was (laughs) the big scuba podcast. Don't you? Yes, yeah, definitely the big scuba podcast. And thank you for listening. Yeah, thanks for listening, and good night. Good night. Now that does wrap up today's episode of the big scuba podcast, but. If you want to hear more from the podcast, make sure you hit that subscribe or follow button depending on what platform you are listening on. That way you will never miss an episode from us. But if you are listening on Apple Podcasts and did enjoy what you heard today, we would really appreciate it if you head to the show page to leave a five-star rating and review. It really does help us. 
If you do, please take a screenshot of that review and send it to us on Instagram and we'll give you a shout out to say a big thank you. If you have any questions for us or anything that has been mentioned in today's episode, be sure to reach out to us on any of our social media platforms or send us an email. The links are in the show notes. We will get back to you no matter what. If you have made it to this point in the episode, we both want to say a big, big thank you for tuning in and we'll see you on the next episode.